please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Weak cues coming in from the Dow, that weakness extending in Asia, as well as the SGX Nifty. It also acknowledged that inflation had moved up towards its 2% target, but again, didn't seem especially concerned about it. The message yesterday was clear, even if the market recovers today in the mid-caps, rallies, uh, get out of leverage position. As we received new engines from Pratt & Whitney, we have replaced all the affected engines, and these planes are now back in service. Markets are now starting with a slight uh, tinge of red. It's a little deeper in the mid-cap space. We are working with a target of about 11,100 to 11,300, and we expect those levels to come by in the next few weeks itself. Yes, I can assure you that uh, any buyback promoter will not participate. Markets are down just 12 points, uh, so there is some amount of uh, recovery. Smart recovery for the market, not entirely unexpected because it went very close to a support mark and from there it's been a bit of a recovery of course. The last hour, interesting, weekly options expiry on the bank nifty and some of the stocks like HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank, the two largest components of the bank nifty are actually making highs of the day. So let's see how things move in last hour. Uh, hi Surabhi, good afternoon. Good afternoon Anuj. Yeah, I guess some of these stocks that you were talking about, the banks, particularly ICICI Bank yeah. etc, they've, they've worked well. Uh, and have uh, helped the cause of the bulls. But what about the overall nature of this market? It's the mm. second day where we've had this whole mid-cap issue play out. Uh, a lot of the stocks uh, have recovered from the lows, but there's still a lot of casualties out there, double-digit casualties. Yes, uh, but you know what? Uh, I'm very happy about this uh, way, the way the trade has panned out today because this was the setup in the morning. Look, yesterday, you know, we, it was all about Goldilocks and, you know, uh, things don't work like that. Today morning, you had negative news. The Asia was down, so market reacted and market started down. And in the morning itself, the advanced decline went to 1 is to 4. So a lot of poison was out after that, you know, uh, and... The market did not violate the Friday low on the Nifty 10,647. I think, and, and it turned. That was the first indication that the market is now moving on the upside. So, uh, last hour could bring a lot of short covering because mm -hmm. a lot of weak players are out of this market. You know, when you have stocks falling 8, 10, 12 percent intraday and sec, you know two days running, mm -hmm. in that case, there's not much left as far as weak hands are concerned. So, uh, my personal sense is weak hands are now out of this market. Uh, the market has dodged a bullet and is ready to move on. What today has done is also given you that sacrosanct support the Friday low once again you know mm. it becomes your sacrosanct support to uh, uh, watch out for and of course the way HDFC Bank and ICIC have rallied today the weekly options expiry it could be interesting because in the morning some people may have sold uh, higher level calls so let's see if they have to cover oh, absolutely and last two days we've been speaking to chartists and they seem to be convinced that this market is heading higher you heard it from Ajay Bala yesterday and this morning uh, we had Gautam Shah make the same point but one sector and it's you know yes. hit this turbulent patch and how uh, what do you think of aviation right now? This mm. decline of 9-10% on, on Interglobe. That company may have specific issues, but the rub off on, on you know, Jet, Spice Jet. Yeah, which was not entirely unexpected once mm -hmm. again. You know, the Jet, in fact, was our stock to watch also this morning mm. because, you know, if the number one player is struggling, the number two and number three player obviously will struggle. My issue with Indigo is, uh, you know, if you see Indigo's chart, uh, not just today's chart, but, uh, you know, we remember we uh, discussed this on 27th when the stock fell on 27th it actually made an all-time high or almost an all-time high just pull out a one week chart of indigo and in a strong market you know it had fallen yeah. right uh, and then later that day we found out that, uh, that the resignation Bush was, had come through uh, yeah. resigning yeah. and in a strong market the stock was down five six percent uh, and now you have these uh, you know kind of numbers so uh, I think uh, for me it will be interesting to see you know on 27th when the the first bit of large selling happened. The first bit, because mm. see, towards the end, in a weak stock, you you know, Others normal trader, pile, normal pile trader would want to okay, pile on. Just, let's just get you, know, out of it, the, yeah. you know, at 12 o'clock, you'll think, okay, there's something wrong with the stock. Uh, mm. Obviously, in a strong mm. market, it's down. Something is coming. So let, but what led to the fall in the first place? Who initiated I mean, the who first initiated domino? Who initiated that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that I think for me would be an interesting bit to find out. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, obviously, there's and you know, obviously things. Uh, over the long term, perhaps some of these stocks become good investment bets, so to be, mm -hmm. after the fall. But uh, off late, of course, uh, th this bit of fall was expected, perhaps. Okay, that is Interglobe down 10% even as we speak. Let's get you the headlines on Closing Bell this afternoon. Key indices trade flat, but mid-caps take a beating once again, second day running, with the index down almost 1%.
The Interglobe Aviation stock takes a nosedive as investors raise concerns over a lack of clarity on low yields as well as compensation from Pratt & Whitney. Pure airline companies Jet Airways and SpiceJet also trading lower. The HCC stock takes it on the chin after Lavasa auditors raise significant doubts over the ability of the company to continue as a going concern. Former ICAI president says regulations for auditors becoming stricter expect more red flags ahead. The PC jeweler stock recovers from the day's low after MD and CEO Balram Garg tells CNBC TV 18 that the company has not received any notice from any investigative agency, including the CBI. He also clarifies that promoters will not tender their shares in the buyback. The HCL Tech stock extends its losses after brokerages cut earnings estimates following lower than estimated organic growth guidance given by the company yesterday. Biocon is also trading on the back foot after the US FDA issues seven observations in a pre-approval inspection at the company's Bengaluru facility. Okay, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade? We have uh, uh, Ashwini Gujral, of course, with us and Sudarshan Sukhani also joining us. Good afternoon. Uh, Ashwani, this was your base case uh, at noon time that perhaps the market has absorbed a lot of uh, weakness and uh, could move on. Uh, for last hour, are you carrying longs or uh, you, have you booked your longs? And what would be your individual stock specific strategy? See, for the last hour, you know, Bank Nifty is almost reaching uh, yesterday's high. So that way, uh, you know, it's clear that while IT is weak, uh, banks are strong, so uh, I don't think the Nifty is going to make a great amount of move, but definitely financials uh, are showing extraordinary strength, plus uh, the Nifty metal index is up almost 0.8. So overall, this looks like a mid-cap correction, and large caps are just kind of uh, biding their time, because uh, overall, uh, you don't see a great amount of trending action in any of the large caps. So that way, maybe the further rally that happens from here uh, will be led by large caps. So 10,650, uh, which is thereabouts today's low, uh, should uh, hold on. And from here, I think stocks like Maruti are also bouncing back. So uh, chances are that a lot of money comes out of mid caps and enters large caps. Now, having said that, uh, uh, individual stocks, JSPL is a buy with a stop of 236, target of 250. Goromandel International is a buy with a stop of 455, target of 480. And Edelweiss is a buy with a stop of 285, target of 302. Okay, Edelweiss uh, definitely came out uh, with what seemed to be pleasing the street in terms of the fourth quarter performance. Those numbers still looking good and the stock has been trending higher. Uh, Sudarshan Sukhani with us as well. Good afternoon, Sudarshan. What is your reading? We've uh, been the bulls are attempting this pullback. And of course, uh, individual stock ideas for the last hour. Yeah, good afternoon. Well, I think today I'm seeing the glass half empty. Uh, there is a pullback attempt and that is natural. When the markets go up and come down, there will be an attempt to see if they can be pushed back again. But that pullback attempt will be deemed successful only if the Nifty crosses 10,800. Otherwise, this is just random noise. The markets have been falling. US markets have been falling. All said and done, I'm a little bearish on the markets. I would ex the idea was to go short in the morning. And uh, I think if tomorrow is choppy or weak, we can actually start building positional shorts that we are not doing today. But the view is not bullish any longer. OK, view is not bullish any longer. So, Sudarshan, good afternoon. What are the stocks for the last hour then? Yeah, good afternoon. Well, uh, HDFC Bank is a buying opportunity. This is essentially a BTST trade, not for the last one hour. Uh, there is, uh, if there is any momentum in the market tomorrow morning, HDFC should outperform the bank. Uh, there are two short selling opportunities. Uh, what's happening, Anuj, is that, as Ashwini said, mid caps are going to probably uh, looking at a correction. There are plenty of short selling opportunities now emerging in mid caps. I don't know whether large caps will do their own thing and mid caps will do their own thing. We'll see. But mid caps are a short. Among others, NMDC is a short. That's part of the metal spec. Uh, to my mind, I think metals are also topping out. So NMDC is a short and Hind Petro is again back. You know, one or two days of small minor rallies that has not sustained. Hind Petro is a short sell. So two shorts and one buy and a market that should be heading lower. 
Okay, the market that should be heading lower. IRB Infra, the net profit at 240 crore versus CNBC TV in poll of 220 crore. Keep in mind, IRB has had a rally as well also in FNO band. So, uh, the first uh, uh, sort of uh, move is to book some profit here and that's uh, happening with MRF. By the way, the market has slipped a bit once again, especially if you see the, the bank nifty, perhaps uh, it could be the weekly options expiry, but just pull out the, the intraday chart of the market and once again at higher level, there's been a bit of a move. Look, look at that move on uh, the nifty bank and uh, it's interesting. Let's pull out uh, both HDFC bank, ICICI bank because they are the ones that uh, are normally moving the most on the weekly options expiry day. So HDFC bank has slipped from the high point of the day. This uh, this one sometimes on a weekly options expiry day acts very funny. But uh, 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 anyway, uh, we have Prakash Divan also joining us in our studios. Prakash, hi, good afternoon. So thoughts first on MRF uh, looked, and uh, again, you know, a stock where you normally price in the moon. Uh, <laughs> so you have to look at it in that context. Uh, uh, but s slightly below estimate of the uh, you know, of the market in terms of margins and the commentary also looking uh, a bit weak. Uh, uh, you reckon this will be one of those weaknesses which will be bought, uh, but at what price uh, would you be buying MRF, if, if at all? So, you know, what, what seems like happening with the tire stocks, and, and this goes for all of them, you know, they, they've had a very smart, strong run, but uh, particularly in the case of MRF, they've also admitted to the fact that uh, some of the petroleum derivative, uh, the input side, you know, has started looking slightly stiffer, mm -hmm. and, and which means, uh, you know, their ability to pass on prices starts getting to be, you know, questionable. So, uh, MRF would also blink at some stage, you know, all, all these strong stocks have that. I mean, we've seen Aisha do that at some stage. It would get bought into, but not at the current levels. And I think people would want to see a little bit of a sell-off or some softness come in. Nobody is very easily, you know, looking at getting out of MRF because your your purchase prices are so low that you know you yeah. you sit comfortably and you could wait for a very comfortable drawdown of sorts. Yeah. So you don't wait for spectacular, uh, you know, erosion there. But I think the softness could probably continue a bit more from an operational perspective. Okay, I have uh, some more details on IRB. I was looking for their order book number. So, on the construction side of the business, the order book is at about 15,000 crores. Don't have the comparable uh, previous number. Uh, Anisha was telling us that, of course, the EPC backlog was around 15,300 earlier. I uh, still don't have their uh, road order book uh, in hand because Q3 was a little weakish for the company in terms of bagging new road orders. Q4, things started picking up, but we still need some more color from the management. That's IRB. That stock's also uh, missing estimates. We were expecting a 12% decline on the top line. They've come out with a 15% drop on the top line. So that has definitely not worked too well. Our margin estimate was at 48.3%. And again, they've, they've slipped from that estimate level as well. So not looking too handsome for IRB. But um, uh, Ashwini, I actually wanted to ask you about these uh, tire stocks as well because MRF has taken some of its peers down as well. Apollo Tires, for instance, is also now under quite a bit of uh, stress. I think this happens every quarter. Yeah. Every quarter, good results are expected. Everybody goes down. Four days later, everybody goes back up. So I don't think this really matters. In some stocks, results don't matter. But maybe 74, 500, 7,500, 1,000, uh, those could be levels where people could look at fresh buying. So at lower levels, you know, tire stocks are outperformers. So you should uh, look towards buying into them. Mm -hmm instead of short selling. Okay, we'll take a break. Uh, NIT Tech is making lows of the day. That's interesting actually. Uh, so uh, just, uh, just see that uh, one intraday, 5% lower is what we have. Uh, the clarification from HCC here uh, may not help much because that's what the auditors have also said in their report. It's, uh, uh, I mean, that, that's been the HCC statement that yes, they are trying to work closely with lenders for resolution. But uh, anyway, 21% lower is what we have. Uh, Nifty has slipped about 25 points lower is uh, how we are tracking the index at this point in time. And uh, weakness also is quite apparent on a clutch of those uh, commodity stocks. Metal stocks have been trading weak. So Hindalco, Vedanta, these uh, are also on the lower side. Indebel's housing finance is down 1, 1.5%. So these are stocks that have uh, been under a bit of pressure. Okay, Sandeep Vagle is with us. Uh, let's get some trading calls going. Sandeep, good afternoon. Which way are you betting, long or short? What are the ideas today? Afternoon, Surbhi. I would go with one long and one short. My buy call is on a Mannapuram finance that has given a breakout. Buy it with a stop loss of 124 for a target of 132. 
I just dial has given a breakdown in the morning. The move has continued. I would sell it with a stop loss of 396. My target would be 342. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Sandeep, for those uh, trades. Uh, Hexaver is now making lows of the day. So some of these mid-cap IT names ahead of numbers. Uh, we just spoke about NIIT Tech. Of course, that de declares numbers tomorrow. And in case of Hexaware, I think the numbers come out post-market today. And ahead of that, uh, that one is also, uh, you know, uh, moving a bit lower. Uh, uh, Prakash, uh, you reckon it's a case of, uh, you know, just as we saw with HCL Tech yeah, as well. Yeah, being cautious. Being cautious ahead of numbers. Yeah. So I think, uh, uh, you know, while the stocks had seen a run-up which was secular and across the board for most uh, the players in the sector, mm. uh, things haven't changed on the ground as a very clear commentary indicates, especially from the biggies. So. Mm. The likes of Hexaware and all would have to be cautious. The only stock that I feel is in a slightly different orbit in terms of its business uh, profile, uh, which is emphasis. Mm -hmm. And for the simple reason that the change in ownership, which happened recently, is now given it, uh, given it new wings in terms of you know client acquisition. Because today it's a PE-backed uh, uh, company mm -hmm. and all those relationship which uh, the PE investor owner brings in uh, could kind of be available for data mining and client acquisition which which was not the case earlier because it was always focused on to only one solution uh, one client solutions but now now things have looked up so i think this is this is one stock you could probably uh, have a contra bet of sorts uh, on Hey, those uh, flashes on your screen essentially talking about tomorrow's meeting the gst council could be looking at the prospects of imposing a sugar says because uh, farmers and mills are reeling under strain uh, and it seems recent measures aren't enough uh, that's sort of the deliberations that are underway at this point in time. Prakash, uh, your thoughts on what's happened with aviation and uh, forget Interglow because there are a lot of issues clouding you know, the, the airline and the company right now. But even Jet Airways from a high of I think 880 there, but so all, almost 900, that's where the stock was. Today we're talking less than 550. So, you know, what's the call? So, yeah, I mean, you know, this particular last round of sell-off in Jet seems to be fairly uh, vicious and... and uh, triggered more because of a sectoral approach. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's like if the leader faces so much of rough weather, mm. uh, we could have air pockets for all the other flyers as well. And then look at how Spice, you know, a belated uh, sell-off in Spice also kind of, you know, got initiated after the Indigo mess happened. But, uh, I, you know, the problems that stand for each of these players are unique and the challenges are unique. So I really don't understand why uh, what's ailing Indigo would also impact Jet in the same way. You know, except for fuel prices, which is... And which yields, is, if, if that yield number for Interglobe is to be believed, then there's more pressure coming in yeah, the Q4 but numbers, right? So, so no, Interglobe others. also has reached, you know, being the Maruti of the skies, what is mm. going to happen is you, you reach a stage where it becomes very difficult to uh, continue improving from that kind of a base, you know. And, and I'm not saying, and as a matter of disclosure, I do have a trading position on Interglobe. And I, I remember Anuj tweeting about, you know the investigation that's currently on. But the logic to shorting Indigo sometime back, a month back, was mm -hmm. the fuel prices. Yeah. And that was going to, and, and they also had to battle with the Pratt & Whitney mm -hmm. uh, debacle. So, you know, these things do set the entire uh, uh, timetable into a little bit of a mess. I know of cancellation, which has never happened in Indigo's history mm -hmm. of 10 years. And then that kind of takes away a lot of uh, mojo out of that uh, whole leadership uh, position that you sit on. And Spice has benefited quite a bit in terms of you know, new routes that they have started seeing occupancy go up and all. So, I think Jet will probably bounce back is my expectation. You know, it has fallen in sympathy with the, with the, uh, with the sector as a whole. Mm. But uh, Jet probably is a little bit of an overdone uh, sell-off. Okay. Uh, down 24% now in three months is what we have as far as uh, Jet Airways is concerned. Uh, by the way, uh, that uh, market move is getting very volatile now ahead of the weekly options expiry. You see the intraday chart of both Nifty and Bank Nifty. There's been a bit of a volatility which is there at this point in time. A uh, uh, couple of stocks have looked interesting. Equitas, uh, I don't know what's, what's up with this stock, but uh, keeps making new highs, that this one. And even in today's weak mid-cap market, that stock right now up about 4%. The other one which has looked interesting is Manapuram. Uh, let's pull out the intraday of that one as well. That also right now is uh, at the high point. Uh, up about 4%. Uh, thoughts on these two, Manapuram and Equitas, Prakash? So, Equitas, I don't know, since Monday, it's actually about 10% that we've seen an up move, uh, you know, and, and 
there is nothing that positively seems to have changed for the sector as a whole. But Manipuram, I, I would believe, uh, you know, generally it is something that got kind of left out in terms of the re-rating which happened to some of these stocks uh, and then NVFCs will start getting, you know, differently valued, you know, depending on the focus and the vertical that you cater to. Uh, gold finance companies particularly do not need to be subjected to such a harsh uh, yield driven, you know, uh, portfolio changes that was happening to some of the other NBFCs in HFCs particularly. So I think uh, Manapuram would probably be a very safe bet of sorts within the NBFC basket to play on and that's why you could probably see some buying coming in uh, in, in, in higher volumes.